put alarm bells off in my head and I thought, you know what? This person's looking for a partial refund. They don't want to send it back. I can tell they don't want to send it back. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. My name's Kevin, this is my cabin. And I just was going to go through the cabin and pick up a few things and get ready to ship them out and talk to you about them. And I'm going to do that still. But I've had something happen that I've had happen in the past. But this one is one I'm going to share with you. And that's somebody who's fishing for a partial refund. I've gotten pretty good over the years at trying to figure out, well not trying, but figuring out who's actually complaining about something. And then who's making up a complaint in order to get a partial refund back. And I know how to call their bluff, and I've done it over and over again, and I'm getting pretty good at it. And I want to know if some of you all out there can do the same thing. So we're going to put the camera up in a minute after I pull three or four things. We're going to talk about how I've tried to figure that out, or at least I convince myself I'm smarter than they are. So let's take a look at these things, and then we're going to talk about that story in a minute too. All right, first item is going to be here. I'm running low on video games. Jack and Daxter, here it is right here. I believe this one went for $8 plus shipping. And it was part of our uh, big giant $100 video game buy. So this is pure profit after fees, after shipping. Our right, next one is something that I haven't sold in a long time. Boy, I mean, I can't even remember last time it sold. And I didn't even realize I still had some left. That's how long ago it's been. And it's a Coleman t-shirt. All right, here it is in the Idaho bin. And we still have a few left down there. It's Coleman camping t-shirt. This one happens to be a size large and we bought them at Sam's Club. So it's a retail arbitrage buy. There you go. And I think we ended up paying, I'll have to pull out the receipt, but I think we ended up paying like under $4 or right around $4 for it. As you can see, the original price is 40. At Sam's Club, they were probably selling for, who knows, 17 or so. I'm selling them for 18. Bottom for, let's say, four. So fees on that, we're going to say, are maybe $3. So there's seven. Shipping, we'll say a little bit more than three, but that's putting it at about 10 bucks. So we're making somewhere between 7 and $8 profit on these, which is not a lot. But what made it worth it for me is there were hundreds of them. And we have sold, oh, I don't know, probably 90 of them. And many of them are the same size. And, you know, it took me a few hours to do all the listings. And then you just have to ship them one at a time. So you end up making, you know, $700 on something like that. Even though you got to ship them so many times, you only have to list them once. So I like that. I'm happy this one sold. I didn't even realize I still had. Looks like I still have seven right left. Next item is a, another retail arbitrage buy, this time from Walmart. And I don't know if I have any left back here. I'm going to check. Doesn't look like I do, which means I have to go back up here because I know I have one up on that uh, shelf in this room. So that means that this is the last one. And it sold for its original price plus shipping, $14.97 plus shipping. I think we paid $2.50. So we're not making a ton of money, but we're making mm, eh, right about 10 bucks on it. One more item, and then we're gonna talk about what I was talking about earlier. This is, I keep some of the sporting goods. Most of this here is for the kids, you know, plush and things like that because they can see it and they can kind of get excited about it and pull them out. And hey, you know, I had an item, I had this popple. And I'm like, why has this popple not sold? This came from the Mount Plushmore sale. If you are new to the program, you gotta go to the Commonwealth Picker channel and watch the Mount Plushmore garage sale. There's a few that have that in the title, but it's the actual garage sale. And I'm like, why hasn't this sold? And I went and double checked it and it's because it's not listed. <laughs> so over a year and the thing, wasn't even listed. Sometimes you make those mistakes. Here is what sold. This sold for $11. Let me get it out without tearing the bag. There's two of them. Wiffle balls. These are softball wiffle balls. Look up vintage wiffle ball and you will be amazed at how much you can get for some of the old wiffle ball bats and the wiffle balls that are in the old boxes. These are modern, these are new, so they're not worth too much. I think I paid a dollar a piece, two bucks, sold them for 11 plus shipping. Not amazing money, but you know what? Better than nothing. 
Let me show you one item that sold first, and then we're going to talk about trying to catch that person that I think was fishing for a partial refund, but they really, really were actually pretty happy with the item. All right, so this is a hat. I picked it up. You haven't seen this garage sale yet. I love this garage sale. Picked it up for a dollar, and it says overworked and underpaid. It is, you know, first I saw it, and I'm like, you know, I don't know if this thing's vintage or not. I'm like, well, it's obviously got a vintage look to it. But you always look on those tags back there. That's one that some of you recognize out there. And it's made in Korea. And it's in great shape, as you can see. And because it's in great shape, I listed it on eBay and I listed it again on Depop. I usually don't list items on Depop unless they're in pretty darn good condition. And it sold really quick on Depop. I got just a tick less than I listed it for on eBay. Because usually I don't get too much of the... You know, will you take this for it over there? Occasionally you do. But I got $28 for this one, free shipping. Paid a dollar. So it's going to be a pretty nice little profit. Really close to 20 bucks, Just a little bit under because it was free shipping. By the way, how many of y'all feel overworked and underpaid? All of you part-time resellers out there. Hey, you know, tell me. What's your other job? What's your other job? If you're a reseller out there, what's your other job? I'm just curious, how many resellers out there really do it because they love it? They just don't need the money, but they do it. You know, you have a pretty high paying job, but you do it. Because I probably would do it unless I'm making so much money that it just is, uh, isn't is worth my time. But uh, that applies to a lot of us out there, overworked and underpaid. I'll tell you what, last year as a teacher, I wasn't overworked. This year, they're getting me back for it. I feel like I'm working twice as hard. Hey, one more really quick before we talk about that. So this is Twisted Radio Waves. This is Jerry Garcia, Dr. Demento interview. And I've told this story so much, I'm not going to tell it again. But $8.91 for a set of two. And I love selling these. And they're starting to dwindle down a little bit after years of years of selling these things. And by the way, I meant last school year, not last year. So the spring last year, we didn't do too much. But this year... I'm putting in double duty. All right, so here's the topic. I sold a video game, a big box game, and it was, I can't even remember what the price was. It's a pretty good profit. I didn't pay much for it. So maybe $20 profit. And the person, first I saw it, and it was going to California. N no offense against you California folks. I'm from California. But it seems to me this kind of thing happens a lot from people in California. I don't know why exactly, but it used to happen with me with big items going to California. People would buy gigantic items and have them shipped out there. I feel because of the fear of me having to ship it back and then they would complain about it and you would give them a partial refund because they know you didn't want to eat the return cost on a giant item. So that's another story for another day. This isn't a huge item, but this is their response. The game is missing the inner cardboard. Please advise. Okay, so first of all, those games do come with an inner piece of cardboard. Sometimes it's fitted and you put things, you know, that are in the box in there. Sometimes it's literally a piece of cardboard. When I listed it, I didn't say this doesn't have the inner piece of cardboard, but I took pictures of everything. And a lot of times I'll put a disclaimer that says comes only with, with what is pictured. And that's a very safe disclaimer to put on a lot of stuff over there. Nothing else, only what's pictured. I don't know that I did that on this one. But when I saw that, I'm thinking, somebody's complaining about the inner cardboard here. This isn't a collector's piece by any stretch of the imagination. I don't know. Maybe this person has shipped it on to somebody else, sold it, now trying to get a refund for their own purposes. I don't really know. But that particular statement put alarm bells off in my head, and I thought, you know what? This person's looking for a partial refund. They don't want to send it back. I can tell they don't want to send it back. My response was simple. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry you're disappointed. Please open a return. I will pay for the return shipping of the item and give you a full refund. That's it. And then I apologized again, I think. Their response. No, I would still like to keep it, but can you provide me with one, meaning cardboard, or at least a small discount off for it? <laughs> Thanks. So in other words, they want me to ship them a piece of cardboard or give them a small discount. Actually, they didn't say small discount, or at least a discount for it, is what they said. So, to me, they don't want to give this thing up. If they didn't think what they bought was worth it, then they wouldn't be doing this. So, here's my response. 
No, thank you for the offer. I think I would rather just have the item back. Let me know what you want to do. There you go. So I think it was a fair price. Matter of fact, I underpriced the market a little bit just because the box wasn't perfect. I mean, it wasn't new, but you know, I, if there's anything a little off about something, I usually put it just slightly under market. So that's the kind of thing that I think a lot of you resellers out here have been doing it for a while, those catchphrases, you know, please advise, you know, this person's been buying and selling on eBay for a long time and they kind of know how to work the system. You have to know how to work the system back. So I think when you see those kind of things, you have to initially call their bluff and see where they're willing to go. Sometimes when you do it, somebody's like, well, forget this person, I'm gonna send it back to them then. And you have to be willing to do that every once in a while. And to me, if more and more eBay sellers out there would call those bluffs, then you wouldn't get quite as many of those situations. The problem, hey buddy, come on in. Turner just come to join us. He has it. Here, let me show it to him. So I made a mistake the other day and I bought... How come it's not working? It's off. Oh, you turned it off. And I bought this thing and didn't see that it's missing a key. <laughs> two keys. Turner pointed out. But Turner's really happy because now he gets to keep it and he's always been asking for one. At any rate, if fewer people would give these partial refunds, I think... Now look, there's a time for a partial refund in my opinion, don't get me wrong. If you've made a mistake and it's a clear mistake and you don't want to pay the shipping cost back, and I, I get that. So definitely there is a time and a place for it. But this one I could tell wasn't that time and wasn't that place. Turner has two great sales out of the Homeschool Hustler yeah. store today. And who's this guy over here? Woody. It's Woody, huh? Yeah. And do you remember this one's name? My buddy, you got it. Blonde hair, blue eyed, my buddy. Look at that. He looks like he could be your buddy. <laughs> Blonde haired and blue eyed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Well, you know what? I paid $5 for this one and it sold for 27 plus shipping. Paid, I think, seven for this one. Sold for 29 plus shipping. So, you know, it's a decent little profit. Maybe just a shade under $40 profit. So, I've seen this one for like 20 years. Yeah, it's been here for a while. It's been sitting over here, huh? We need to find something else to sit over here. I don't know yeah. what we're going to find. We can't put Wiley e. Coyote there. So, All right. Well, thank you, Turner. And you're going to have $2 to... Save, donate, and spin. You got it, buddy. Thanks. Bye. Hey, you little homeschool hustler, Reagan. How are you tonight? Good. Good. What did you have done today? Uh, I had... The Invisalign on the bottom and then the brackets on the top. Got some uh, orthodontic stuff going on yeah. today. Some Invisalign. Feeling okay? Yeah. All right. Say so we've had some sales in your Commonwealth Picker store, huh? Yep. What did you have to ship out this evening? Uh, two ornaments, a mug, and a shirt. All right. And who's getting this first ornament? Jason and Jeremy Southern West Virginia Picker on eBay. So that ornament's going to Jeremy. Yep, you can find him at Southern West Virginia Picker on eBay. And then we have this stuff here we're going to pack up and send out to Jason. Yep. So thanks, guys, for those purchases and supporting Reagan, right? Thank you. Bye. And don't forget to get your sticker at CommonwealthPicker.com. Hey, let me grab a couple more really quick, and then we're going to head inside and show you what's sold in there. All right, this one should be in a Pennsylvania bin. There should be one bag left. And this is, hey, buddy. This is a Panasonic phone, and they ship first class. It sold for $20, free shipping. So we're not making a bunch, but it is pure profit at this point, probably around $12. Next is a retail arbitrage buy from Blue Ridge Mama. And there's three of them going out. I'll have to use Matt Part-Time Picker's heat gun. I have got to do that drawing. We will do it tomorrow, I promise. Two going to Mountain Man Treasure. And one going to Smoke and Flips. Smoke and Flips. Both of them have YouTube channels. You hear me talk about Troy all the time. Smoke and Flips has been kind to us. He bought this in a man from us up here, the other one right there. And he has been really kind and bought something yesterday too. So y'all go check out his channel. And of course, Troy over at Mountain Man Treasure has a great channel. And uh, tell Troy hello for me. 
Thank you, Troy. All right, one thing really quick. Turner, you want to help me with this, bud? All right. This came from Marcus. Check this bell out, Turner. What do you think of that bell? Williamsburg, Virginia. Colonial Williamsburg. And you're a homeschooler, so we're going to go there one day yeah. and learn a little bit of history, which I'm probably more excited about than you are. <laughs> All right, thank you for teaching me so much about eBay. I opened my own eBay store in 2020. If you have time, I would love it if you would check it out. For sure. We'll definitely jump over there. It's, uh, let's see, my store name is Hambones Picks. What do you think of that name? Cool. His name is Marcus. Hope you like what I sent. And he sent us, let's see here, buddy. What did he send us? Why don't you hold the camera for me? Okay. Can you hold it still? Yeah. All right. Turner's getting pretty good at this YouTube stuff, aren't you, buddy? Let's see here. It's like a mug. And y'all, you know, sometimes, believe it or not, you can send these mugs in these boxes and I'd say it's about a 95% success rate without them breaking with no bubble whatsoever. If they do break, they usually break here. History teachers always bring up the past. <laughs> There's no doubt. We're like elephants. Yeah. We always bring up the past, don't we? Look at that. That's great. I'm taking that to school, Marcus. I really, really appreciate it. Mary Kay Eyeliner. Bahama Blue. I don't know. $10 free shipping. $3 to ship. $1.50 in fees, we're in the pure profit, $5.50 profit. I meant to do these out there, but I forgot to pick them up. So I figured I'd do them in here. Lego Stormtroopers, four of them, $15 plus shipping on these. And we did that video on the Commonwealth Picker Channel. I can't remember that young man's name, but uh, y'all out there did not like that young man. I think one person yelled at me for trying to lowball him on these, but most everybody was yelling at him. I kind of felt bad for the kid. Love this one. Surprised it took quite so long. I mean, it's got some great graphics on it. Maybe the tag. No, it's a Looney Tunes tag made in the USA. I thought this one would be a great seller for a good price. Paid a buck for it, so I'm not complaining. $20 plus shipping. But initially when I saw it, because it looks like it's almost painted on, I'm like, this is easy 50 bucks. And it wasn't. <laughs> but, you know, I'll make $17 profit. All right, I forgot to bring the Animan head cover in here. So just act like I'm holding it right now. Here, I'll hold an old nap. Nah, I can do that. So here, I'll put a picture of it on the screen right now. All right, there you go. <laughs> For those of you who don't know what it is, if you watch this show, you know you know what it is. 2481 plus shipping, or excuse me, 2481 free shipping. Those go out for just under eight ounces. And we have, let's see. Let me, let me get these names. Let me check. Deborah, Robert, Karen, and Callie. We're down to 23 left. And Craig bought one, and Craig left us a message. He says, wanted to get one of these before they're all gone. Me and my wife, Charlotte, have been selling part-time on eBay since March of last year. Thanks to your help and the help of others, we have grown significantly. Now we are working on a storage building, which is 40 feet by 8.5. Nice. I'm jealous. Somebody come build me another one. I want another one. So if you can build something, come on, we'll make a deal and, and you can build. You can, I've got these ideas in my head. I'm like, ah, oh, this would be perfect. I love what I have. I absolutely love that shipping table. It makes my life so easy. But you know, part of the process I think is important. And one thing that I don't like is that items that I buy come in here. They come in here to my death pile room and then, so they've got to come inside. I track mud and water, and it's raining out there, so I'm thinking of that stuff. I track stuff in here through the living space, and then it's got to go back out there. And I, I just kind of want to make it a little bit more seamless. So, at any rate, that is awesome. I would love to see a picture if you're on Instagram. Send me a picture. Anybody out there, I want to see your eBay spaces. Go over to, maybe we'll do a hashtag, eBay space, and then put Commonwealth Picker in there or eBay room or something like that. Would really love it if you would sign it if possible. I know sometimes that's not an easy task. Actually, believe it or not, it's not an easy task to get everybody to sign it. For me, it's an easy task. So it says y'all, so that means everybody, but that's okay. We'll, def we'll get me and somebody else, maybe everybody. Thanks for all you do, God bless. eBay store is Craig's, Craig apostrophe S, Craig's got it. So thank you, Craig, we appreciate it. And he said it your way.
All right, hey, just want to say thank you to everybody who's been buying stuff out of the store. The fact that we sold out of those ornaments is amazing. You all support Reagan. She just loves reading your messages, and she just loves shipping that. I think she likes making the money, too. So, at any rate, thank you all so much. We appreciate you, and we'll see you next time.